for, I forget all my words. And it's just silence that I'm all going, uh, 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 uh. And I just fucking bomb hard as fuck. And everyone's like, boo. <laughs> Including your grandma. And my grandma was like, you fucking suck. <laughs> so everyone booed the shit out of me. I've had my most embarrassing moment at a comedy <laughs> show. Okay. Right? Right. This is it. And I'll never forget this. So. Hey folks, Pete here from Tyrish Times. It's about to rain, rain, rain. In the next couple of minutes, we got that massive monsoon uh, rain cloud about to drop a massive downpour on Bangkok. It's gonna rain, baby. My hat's gonna blow off. Hold on a second here. Holy moly. Holy moly. Keep your hat on there, Pete. <laughs> so the other day, I went down to the Sportsman Bar on Sukhumvit 13 in Bangkok for Raw Comedy Asia's open mic night. And it was a great one. And it was an absolutely hilariously funny evening, folks. I really enjoyed it. So we're about to show you some Bangkok comedy now in just a moment. And I hope you like that as well. All Thailand related jokes. And I love the Thailand related stuff. You could, I mean, if you're a comedian in Bangkok, you must have just an endless supply of, of jokes. I mean, there's so many characters in Bangkok. It's great. So then after that then, we're going to interview the two founders of Raw Comedy in Asia, Justin from Canada and Chris, who's Thai American and spent most of his life in Chicago. But first, let's go watch some of the comedy from the open mic night. I hope you enjoy. What's up, everybody? Hey, how about a hand? Uh, how about a round of applause for all you guys? Thanks for coming out tonight. You guys are amazing. I'm Thai. I, uh, uh, and I'm also white. Thank you for laughing at that. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he thinks he's white. That's what it is. I was walking down the street and I saw uh, an old homeless Thai guy with no legs. Right? And I thought to myself, hey, there goes a guy that's just like me. <laughs> he's half Thai. <laughs> you guys, uh, you guys know Big C? <laughs> Who here shops at Big C? Let's go, you broke bastards. Let's see. Let's go, you dead Me too. All the way from, uh, <laughs> the, the woman's underwear uh, department. Uh, just kidding. Uh, so, Big C, that's the whole point of the place, that it's fucking big. That's the whole point of the place, that, that it's fucking big. And then I was walking down the street, and then I see a uh, mini Big C. <laughs> And um, you know, they, and they've seen it. They've seen it places. And then they finally, they're at the beach, and they see this tsunami coming. And they're like, "Oh my God! Everybody, watch out! It's a tsunami!" <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the tsunami, everybody? And some guy comes up, and he's like, "Actually, it's uh, pronounced uh, tsunami. <laughs> the T is actually silent." And he's like, oh, no way, I didn't know that. And he's like, yeah, it's actually a Japanese word. Su means harbor. And Nami uh, is Japanese for wave. And he's like, no way, get out of town. I didn't know that. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's actually, it was introduced to, uh, you know, the, Amer the English speakers uh, in 1896. It was first published in the newspaper. Uh, but the Japanese have been using this word for centuries. And the other guys, oh, get out of town, no way. And then a wave just crushes them. <laughs> And they die! <laughs> hey, who here's got tattoos? Yeah. yeah, you must think you're pretty cool, don't you? <laughs> weekend for the purposes of this job. So I haven't been there in years. Uh, but anyway, there was a guy, he had no shirt on, and he was drinking from a bucket, and he was huffing one of those balloons, and he's all, Bleh. and I'm not judging him, right? Like, I'm not knocking him for that. That's me every time I go to Kalsai. But uh, on his back, he had a tattoo that said, only God can judge me. And I was like, well, obviously, that's not fucking true. <laughs> Everybody on this shitty Cal San Row is judging you correctly that you're a fucking idiot with a shitty tattoo. The only thing more annoying than a guy who won't shut the 
the fuck up about his tattoos is the person that goes, hey, what does that tattoo mean? <laughs> Don't fucking set them up. <laughs> My name's Harvey. I'm originally from the UK. I've been living in Thailand for 16 years, proving just because you're a failure in one country doesn't automatically make you a success in another. <laughs> Still, at least I'm a failure on two continents now. Two down, two to go. <laughs> my wife is from Thailand, and when people back home find out that my wife is Thai, they automatically assume she must be cheap and easy, which is really racist and offensive, because she is not cheap. Unless <laughs> <laughs> she's easy. <laughs> on the eye. Aww. Okay. That's good to see. But then I am blind, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, I take a lot of grab bikes. You guys take grab bikes? Woo! Yeah, I love a grab bike. The only thing is, um, when I get a grab bike driver who's like a big guy, and I hop on back as well, I sort of think, I feel like Jack and Rose could have both fit on that door. <laughs> <laughs> if we're both making it through Bangkok traffic on this Honda Click, they could have both fit on that door. <laughs> ladies, we have some ladies here. You guys ever have a man, a gentleman, no. take you <laughs> restroom. <laughs> it was just men and staff. <laughs> and what did you think of that? I was giggling and laughing all night long. So check it out folks. Go down there to the Sportsman. I'm going to leave the links in the description to all the media. So if you're interested in having a fun night out in Bangkok, check the description box and uh, you'll enjoy yourself freely. It's a good night, 200 baht. It's cheap as chips for a great night, you know, fun entertainment. Anyway, we're gonna jump straight into the interview now. I've just asked the two guys, Justin and Chris, why they started a comedy club in Bangkok. And also, in this interview, you're gonna hear the story about the most embarrassing moment of my life, and it's Thailand related. So, um, yeah, enjoy that one. <laughs> and let me know what you think in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel like the video and leave me a comment I always love your comments anyway you're rambling on now Pete let's do it let's get into the interview we're in this cool city with all this crazy stuff happening and there's comedy here there's there's funny pe funny people come here and not just like but just performers and audience members as well everyone they if you come here you have a sense of humor Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the, it, it appeals to funny people because it's such a ridiculous place. A lot of great characters here. Yeah, exactly. for sure. So many, so, so many stories, can, so many characters. Dude, you can make so a, much nonsense. <laughs> so much nonsense. It's ridiculous. The <laughs> drama is bizar it's bizarre. It's crazy. Dude. So, what got you into comedy? For me, my mom is Thai, she, and um, she. I think the reason she had sex with a white man and had a, <laughs> uh, a mixed baby, she wanted. She was always been pushing me to try to be something like an actor or some whatever shit uh singer um i can't whatever um and so as a young age i would she would make she was she was 20 when she had me so she would hang out with her 24 25 year old girlfriends and i would be singing or dancing for them and entertaining them and it was a muscle that i had and my whole life i, I just felt like just entertaining but i never i saw comedy on tv i loved comedy growing up but it was never in my immediate circle um, ever in college there was an open mic and I tried I, I gathered my friends and rehearsed a set um, and they all laughed and said I sucked and I'm like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not doing it fuck it um, but then I got to Thailand when I was 25 26 and I found I heard there was an open mic and um, at the time I would I would make snapchats I would make a little 10 second and I would just drop one-liners or funny things and funny jokes and um, I saw that there was open mic and I said, okay, so I took three minutes of my one-liner things and I made it into a little set. And then I, and I would always listen to stand-up comedy. Um, and I kind of, I, I knew what a set was supposed to be. Mm. And I went there and I did it for the first time at uh, Comedy Club Bangkok, actually. It was the first time I ever did comedy. And um, 
it was like, ah, as soon as I got that first laugh, it was like, all right, this is exactly what, this is where I'm going to take that energy. Cause I've always had being the funny guy in the group or like, you know, for every, I was always a funny guy in my class and then in my school. And then when I got to a job or the military or my university, I was always a, the, one of the funniest dudes. And now it's like, now I get to be one of the funniest dudes like in a city. You know what I mean? I'm taking it easy there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> one of them. Right. Let me, let me, let me tag just, that just too. Scale, sorry, go yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Just scaling up. Yeah. Well, like, okay, so I said, um, like, a fan, Dave Chappelle, whatever. But uh, in my own life, too, because what, what you were saying reminded me of this, is, like, I've always valued funniness. Like I've always my like my family is all about we're French Canadian we're always like making <laughs> making fun of each other and it's always like me and my dad teaming up and ripping on my brother or them two teaming up and ripping on me and we're always just making fun of each other that's awesome and so we just like value that um, and I've always played kind of that role in my family as like the tension breaker kind of bringing the laughs kind of guy and when I kind of get that from my grandpa so I've always like wanted to surround myself with funny people and dude there's so many like people that I hang out with that I think are hilarious that are way funnier than me but they just wouldn't want to do stand up yeah and there's this weird like attention like I want to be a rock star kind of feeling mm -hmm. and uh, I so first I wanted to be a pro hockey player uh, and then I broke this collarbone once, then this one twice, and I was like, all right, this probably isn't going to work out. <laughs> it wasn't very good anyway. Um, and then I wanted to be a rock star, and uh, so, but I suck at playing guitar and singing, uh, so I have no sense of time, so it's bad. So I was like, this isn't going to work out. Right, how else can I get attention? <laughs> uh, but then for like stand-up, like getting a big laugh, is, is such an incredible feeling. Like there's nothing like that compares to it really. Like yeah. scoring a goal or like hitting a home run. Or it's just you alone. Yeah. You're just, ah, I made all these people react and I get to feel that wave of energy just hit yeah. me. It's all me. It's all. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Have you ever bombed Same. on stage? When I was, uh, when I was 16, I was a rapper, actually. And my rap name was Daddy Long Legs. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, did, I, I went to rap at my school talent show. And everyone I knew was in the audience. I played, including, I played, including your like grandparents. I played football. My grandma was there. All my teachers, the girl I had a crush on, was sitting in the front row. All my best friends, all, everyone I knew in my life was at this at this show. And uh, I was gonna rap with my friend Nick, and um, I got really high before the show. Um, that was smart. But I thought, but I'm I could do I, that, <laughs> I'm good at rapping when I'm high, so it's like natural, right? And uh, I went on stage, and they played the music. It was dark. Everyone was like making noise, cheering, and it was crazy. Just everyone, I all the faces. I knew everybody. And uh, the music started, and I was gonna rap first. And I walk up, and I'm about to, you know, drop a line, and I forget everything I say. For, I forget all my words. And it's just silence out on my own. Uh, 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 uh. And I just fucking bomb hard as fuck. And everyone's like, boo. <laughs> Including your grandma. And my grandma was like, you fucking suck. <laughs> Everyone booed the shit out of me. And uh, I spent, me and Nick spent three and a half minutes on stage. They let they just kept, continued playing the song. They didn't shut it off. They played the song until the end. And we just stood there and tried to remember our lines and rap. And we just couldn't remember anything. And... Um, after like the first 30 seconds, it wasn't scary that everyone was booing me and I'm going to survive this. It's fine. Right. It's just, I look like an idiot for three minutes and that's, you know, I'll, I'm going to, it'll be fine. Right. You know, at, at the end. So now because that's like such a hard bomb that now you're kind of, bomb now you're kind of bulletproof. Like, yeah. And then that's the thing. Like, so there's a couple and things. By the way, when I, I went home that night and my grandma, um, my grandma was at the top of the staircase and I said, Hey grandma, did, uh, did I do hey, grandma, good? Hey, grandma. She's like, oh, hey, Chris. And I'm like, uh, did you see the show? She's like, yeah, I saw it. And then she just went and closed, <laughs> closed the bedroom door. And just, just, That's cold just bloody. cold, just cold, <laughs> just ice me out. Um, so that was, a, that was a pretty brutal bomb. But, uh, right, brutal so bombing, bombing is like valuable. It's instruct. You learn a lot more from bombing than you do yeah. from killing. Um, so, so yeah, and you can't be afraid to bomb. As I was telling you off camera before, mm. but it's like, you have to embrace bombing because it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, and that's how you find like, like you get that data that you're collecting, like laughs are data, but also si silence is data too. And you use that to refine your material. Um, so you learn a lot from bombing and like, and, and so if you know that there's something there and it bombs like at an open mic, that doesn't bother me. It's like, what bothers me is if I'm getting paid and I'm supposed to be killing it and I'm not, yeah. that bothers me. But open mic, 
like obviously I'd rather do well yeah but the point isn't necessarily to kill at the open mic it's mm -hmm. to create and refine material and it's um, you bring and when you go like people that bomb it's because when they walk on stage they appear nervous they they're not ready to be in this moment you know what I mean so it's all about just being ready to just be present and you won't if you if you can just go up there and be comfortable you're not gonna bomb so it's all for me it's always been about it's like a state of mind just yes getting in a certain state of mind to be on stage and if you're always kind of on then it's easier to just walk on any stage anywhere i always feel uh so first of all, okay, bombing is useful in life too because uh, bombing really sucks. I've been bombing all my life. But then, like, then I bomb and I bomb in conversations and whatever. I bomb at my job. Bomb at podcast. I bomb at business meetings. I bomb at the hockey game, yeah, and totally. none of it really bothers me because yeah. bombing at the comedy show is worse than any of that. So it kind of prepares you for life in a lot of weird ways. Have you been heckled? Oh yeah, millions of times. Give us an example. Um, so one time um, I was doing this like sexist joke that I do and this lady was like I thought you were one of the good ones But you're actually the most sexist piece of shit out of all these comedians oh, and I was shit. like, oh, sorry you feel that way sweetheart <laughs> <laughs> Sorry there toots <laughs> uh, so Plenty of other shit like uh, for me not recently um, there was I've never been heckled. People don't like. They usually just they they don't say anything to me. They just leave. Yeah, you, you I, they, they just, just I just walk walk. But that doesn't happen often. Um, when I was coming up, I used to do Kausan, right? So we had a club on Kausan, and we would do shows every single night um, of the week, every single day. We do shows, and we'd get all types of crazy drunk assholes. Um, one time there was a guy laying down on, in the front row, just laying down, like if, like in Kate from Titanic, uh, <laughs> Rose from Titanic, laying down, and um, just a lot, just an asshole, and no one kicked him out, and I just had to deal with his nonsense. And um, when I get, there's two ways. When heckle, you could either take an approach where this is unacceptable, and that's these, you have to leave. But if you, but I like to see like, all right, where is this gonna go? I like let it, I'll let it play out for 30 seconds, and if he's belligerent to, if he's too belligerent then all right then i'll shut him down hit him with a, a you know make fun of him or something like that and get and the cool thing about heckle if you if you roast or make fun of a heckler everyone in the, sh the room is on your side yeah so you always because they're annoyed with the heckler too and you always win because you have the microphone yeah no matter what even if you what you even if what you say isn't even that good Actually, yeah, you still win you still by win default. By default, the yeah. boom is on your side. The, the, the other thing, like, so hecklers are they're idiots, right? Yeah. So they chime in, and then you kind of go, "What was that?" And then they kind of go like, oh, "Oh fuck, I didn't actually think you were gonna like react to my heckle." And then they're kind of deer in headlights. And even if you don't have anything lined up, you can just ask them questions. They're usually drunk, right? And they're the type of person that's gonna heckle at a comedy show, so they're kind of an idiot. Um, oh, remember that girl? So, there was uh, a girl that heckled this show once at Raw like yeah. a year ago. She said I was on stage and she stood up and said some shit. Oh, dude, you said what did uh, she say? I forget what she's uh, oh, offended what? about something. But you know, and then what you said she had like frizzy kind of weird hair. And then he was like, he was like, you look like George Washington. <laughs> Are you about to sign the? <laughs> like she's gonna leave. And she left, and I'm like, look, she's gonna go sign the Declaration of Independence. And she, as she left, but she was upset over something. some very. Not she actually misunderstood. I don't remember what the yeah. joke was, but she misunderstood it. Yeah. See, that's the other thing is people like they don't pay attention. Like yeah. I have this joke that I do where I go like, okay, so if I have a son, he's gonna play hockey for the Thai national team, which is a very achievable goal. Um, <laughs> like unlike my dad's dreams of me playing for Team Canada, that was never gonna happen. I had to move to Bangkok to be a relevant hockey player. Um, and then I go, so if I have a son, Thai national team. If I have a daughter, she'll be nice. You know, she can she can play hockey if she wants to, and then like it's, which is not that funny. Like you have, but you haven't given thought to it. But but but, but like to. yeah, I just go like whatever, no pressure. <laughs> it should be nice. And oftentimes women get offended at that, and I'm like, you don't even, do you not see what I'm doing here? I'm saying I'm going to be an overbearing shitty father to my son, and I'm going to be a good dog, a good dad to my daughter. <laughs> Do you not see that? I'm being better to her than I'm being to my, I'm like putting pressure right. on him. I'm, I'm carrying on this tradition of living vicariously through <laughs> my son, the right. son, which is bad parenting. Right. So you don't even know what you're offended about, you dummy. Yeah. 
So um, I've had my most embarrassing moment at a comedy <laughs> show. Oh, okay. right? yeah. This is it, and I'll never forget this. So it's 10 years ago, 2012. I go back to Ireland, and it's St. Patrick's Day. And I went to a comedy club with my friends. About 10 of us went, and it was a full house, 400 people. Wow. And the comedian walks out, and he gets on the mic, and he says, has anyone come back from abroad? And I just straight away know my friends are going to point at me a high down because I'm just embarrassed. I don't want to. I don't want to be the focus of the attention. All my friends point and, and they say, "He's just come back from Thailand." Oh, yeah. And then the comedians like, "You've been in Thailand? What have you been doing over there?" And this whole set, like black ten minutes of shagging lady boys over in Thailand, <laughs> me, you dirty man, and he's just roasting me. And I'm just like this. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Then the next guy comes out, gets on the mic, and says, "Who's the guy that's been in Thailand?" <laughs> So you think it's over, right? <laughs> yeah. The next person comes out, it's all night, and it's like, oh my god. And then I just, you know, all you can do is laugh. I mean, yeah. I don't get offended, just laugh. I mean, and then the thing is, went to a bar after it, and I'm in the bar having a beer, and this woman walks up to me and looks at me, she's like, that, you're that dirty guy that was in Thailand. <laughs> and I was like, it's a joke. He doesn't know me, he's just using me as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> You're that dirty guy. <laughs> dirty guy in Ireland. And she like that and turned away and walked away. I'm like, that's a bloody joke. Come on. Wow, right. that sounds ruthless over there. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, we gotta go to Ireland. Right? <laughs> Check out these shows. You know, as a as a comedian, it's always you have to did you did they let you win in any way? Did they give you any rede redemption of some sort? No, no, just, no, just, yeah, like, just, just a roast. That's, that's terrible, just a roast. Bro. It's always nice to like let them win in the end, even if because like you give and then you you take and then you have to give back. But it's also oh. funny to just be a dick. Yeah. Because <laughs> I hate I hate like as a comedian, it's like I don't want to be that guy when I'm on stage when people are like, oh fuck, I hope he doesn't call on me. Mm. You know what I mean? I hope he doesn't make. Fun yeah, you want everybody to feel yes. like yeah, but at a big that show, they're like welcome. He need, but that comedian, he he needed you. If you, got, if you were able to talk to him, he would be like, "I love you for that because yes. I was yeah. you helped me win over three hundred and ninety nine other people." Right? Yeah, I mean, at, everyone at the expense, was <laughs> the expense of your trip to Thailand. This is yeah, not exactly. Ask about so you say it was it was embarrassing. You didn't you didn't find it funny? When well, I look back on it now, like it was a, kind of a really. Um, a really kind of defining moment in my life type of thing, like something <laughs> I'll never forget. Yeah. You know, I remember just everybody like, ah, and the guy on stage. But you know, in Ireland, you have to you take it as a joke. I mean, I know he's joking. I'm, I laugh about it. I'm embarrassed, but I always remember it. But I don't, I just, it's cool. It was a cool experience. You yeah. dirty man. You dirty, <laughs> you dirty man. That's terrible. With those lady boys over there. I'm like, it's a bloody joke. It's hey, he's making it up. Somebody's got to fuck uh, him. Yeah, someone has to take the fall that Somebody's got to fuck him. So, uh, um, all right. Yeah, that's brutal, man. <laughs> that's brutal. I'm sorry you went through that. <laughs> I'm glad you made it out okay, though. Guys, thanks very much for doing this. It's a pleasure. Now, I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to film some B roll for this. Right on. But I'm not going to sit in the front row. Yeah, right. You <laughs> dirty man. You dirty man. You, you dirty man. <laughs> <laughs> Right, thanks very much guys, and uh, so if you like that folks, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, what you think of the interview, and um, hit the like button, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Well, thanks Pete, to see you too.